Okay, so Pi News episode 61. So first up, in a story from Tom's Hardware, it's probably not the news you were waiting for when you saw new Raspberry Pi. So another Raspberry Pi has been found inside a device, and this one is a Compute Module 3E. So you can see the picture of it. Scroll down, there's a better picture of it here. And uh, from the Tom's Hardware story, it looks like it's using the same system on a chip package as the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Les Pounder has been doing some research in it, trying to work out what it is. So it was found by Twitter user Pi Zero in your pocket, and it was inside a Wallbox electric vehicle charging point. You can see it's got a QR code on it there. And in the article, he talks about how hard it is to get your hands on a Compute Module 4. So the Compute Module 3E uses the older SODIM form factor, and there was no information on the Raspberry Pi site or the GitHub page. But I'll let you read the whole story. Um, there's a lot of research gone into it, and there's also a table to show you the equivalent devices and what's similar and what's different. Now, I saw this in a, an ETA Prime video, uh, the Crow Pi L. Now, a while back, not that long ago actually, CrowPie contacted me about the older one and uh, it sounded like it was a new device, the way the email came through. And when I looked into it, it had been out a while and uh, I figured that less people would be interested in it. This is uh, kind of a stripped down version, but pretty cool. Uh, now you are going to need a Pi 4 for this and uh, that's what starts to make it a more expensive proposition. CrowPi L is a light version born out of CrowPi 2 and L stands for light and laptop. So some of the specs, 11.6 inch screen, uh, 1366 by 768. Still got the GPIO pins, 96 programming courses for beginners to learn. That's quite a nice side of it. Built in rechargeable battery with 5000 milliamps. Magnetically mounted design makes Raspberry Pi installation easier and faster. And it does look good. Have a look at ETA Prime's video. Uh, he covers it and sort of shows the insides of it. But uh, yeah, it's always nice to see this sort of thing. And it's always going to be chunky. People are always going to talk about they'd rather a Compute Module 4 one uh, because obviously you don't have that chunky form factor of the Pi 4. Um, but it will be very well supported because it's built on the Pi 4. And here you can see about all the programming kits and things like that. Something different from Hackaday here, Pi 400 Cyberdeck. And if you have a look at the picture, it's a tiny little screen. Uh, it has a couple of speakers on it but it is cool. So it's a 320 by 240 display, and there's a video on here of it being used. Next up, another Hackaday story. So Raspberry Pi Pico replaces PlayStation memory card, and uh, you can see all the GPIO pins and the memory card adapter here as well. And there's a nice wiring diagram here included, and it mentions that you get a fully functional PlayStation memory card, but more importantly, a memory card with a USB interface that allows you to back up your saved games to the computer. So you could possibly import them into something like RetroPie or Batacera or something like that and be able to use your backed up original PlayStation games on those systems. They're talking about uh, circumventing PlayStation's copy protection system, but surely that happened a while ago. And it says here, Daniel is working on a custom PCB that implements a suitable edge connector, meaning you'll no longer need the sacrificial card. While not currently implemented, the board design also includes an SD slot, which eventually should allow the Pico mem card to hold even more data. And PS2 compatibility is mentioned, but it doesn't look like it's supported yet, but they're working on it. Next up from Facebook and the Raspberry Pi and DIY projects page. There's been loads of good stuff on that in the last couple of weeks. And this is from Michael Clements. He's already made a load of really, really nice Pi cases, 3D printed cases for the Pi 4 and uh, they, they just look amazing. So we have a look at some of the pictures. He always does videos as well, so have a look for his YouTube channel. Uh, but you can see there's what looks like a nice tower cooler. There's a nice LED fan in there. Very neat looking, very nicely finished. Always a very professional job. Yeah, and a bit of uh, ventilation here. And you can see all the ports on these two sides seem to be available, but not so much these connections. I'm not sure if this bit pops out. And in the comments, any instructions how to build this case? And there's a link here for the DIY Life 3D printed Raspberry Pi. And it looks like loads of details are in here. Yeah, and even pictures of the 3D printing, all the things you need, and also a link to the video on the case as well. Another one on Facebook, uh, this is a weird one. Uh, a load of CRT screens and a previous post here, OMX player sync working over a network of 10 Pis. Those CRTs will be worth quite a bit of money now as they keep going up in price. So a very nice in-car entertainment system here. Pi 400 provides in-car entertainment for backseat passengers. Screens are portable touchscreen monitors, industrial strength Velcro holding them in place. 
but an upgrade is on the horizon. A Pi 400 in the glove box, as you can see here. Easily accessible, feeds video via HDMI through a powered splitter. Both monitors are powered over USB. One screen is an additional USB connection for touchscreen. So you can touchscreen control the Pi 400 in the back. That's cool. Yeah, there is a point here in the comments. The Pi 400 seems an odd choice. Why not use a regular Pi 4 and a wireless keyboard? I suspect it's probably to do with availability uh, because Pi 400s are still widely available. Pi 4s are very hard to get hold of. More in car entertainment on Facebook, but this is different. This is more like a head unit. This is my first project with a Raspberry Pi 4. I've made myself an Android head unit for my car, opted for this route of a custom audio system as it still leaves the factory system in place, which is what I wanted as a factory unit also controls the heater controls. Allows Apple CarPlay, fully functional Android experience too, best of both worlds. Does look impressive, you can see in the pictures close up here, and uh, it doesn't look out of place, obviously it's always hard to tell in a picture, but uh, yeah, very, very nice. Saw so this on Raspberry Pi and DIY projects on Facebook. Anyone have a clue as to what job this Pi could be doing in a hospital? And there's plenty of answers in the comments if you want to read through to try and work out what it is, or if you've got your own ideas. Another handheld, I always like handhelds uh, for Pis. Uh, this is based on a Pi 3B, around seven hours gaming, so I must be talking about the battery there, I'm guessing. Touchscreen, PSP emulation, and below are supported. Not sure how well PSP works on a Pi 3B. It works very well on a Pi 4. And you can see it's got the full dual analog stick set up, which is always nice to see on a handheld. It gives you much more compatibility. And nice to have touchscreen as well. Yeah, looks pretty cool with the interface. And on the back, we've got a couple of speakers at the top here. Uh, we've got a couple of fans that looks like on a heatsink, keeping it all cool. From Reddit, we had a very cool looking Pi 400. So this has been resprayed, and uh, there is more details. Yeah, there's a link here. So it links to the Raspberry Pi forums, and if we scroll down, uh, you can see some of the inspirations for the projects and the layout and everything. And uh, there's all sorts of information on what was used to do the project. Cost about a hundred pounds, it looks like. Uh, all sorts, I mean, loads and loads of cans of paint and everything, even a mouse that's matching. It's always nice to see the Pi 400 taken apart. So this long board with the big heat sink that does an incredibly good job. So you can see spraying the back, already looking very nice. Taking off every single key. Spraying them on these sticks, look with some blue tack here. All sorts of close-ups, which is always nice to see. And I think this is probably the most finished of all the pictures. Oh no, this is the most finished of all the pictures. So you can see uh, all of the keys are back and they're all labeled and everything. It does look really nice. I really like it. It's a great little project, but it goes on and on and on. There's, there's loads and loads of detail in there. And uh, obviously have a look through the comments and see what people have said. But yeah, I really like that one. I did do a video a while ago where there was a Stealth Pi 400. It was in one of the Raspberry Pi newses. I think I mentioned it in the title, but that also looked very cool. But that was just all completely black. Next up, we put a Pi CM4 in an aluminium switch shell. And you can see here, looking very, very nice. Compute Module 4. Uh, this is the Retrolite CM4 boards that enable this to be done. And there are more pictures. So we have uh, a nice look at the insides with a big heat sink, a lithium ion battery, nice size screen. Yeah, very special. And last up, uh, just a really great video to watch. Uh, so the classic ball on plate with OpenCV, a Pi camera and three servos. I don't know how this works as fast as it does. Uh, it, it just is incredible. It doesn't look like it would be possible. So when you see, throw the ball on and it adapts. It's a bit like if you have a table tennis bat and you're trying to balance it and hold it in place. But uh, it's just, look how responsive. It's just amazing how, how quick it adjusts to it and keeps it on there. Really, really good project. And it does say work in progress. And you can see here, what do you mean work in progress seems to work perfectly. Still need some fine tuning on the PID side and the tolerances on the 3D printed parts can be reduced to make the whole thing more stable. But yes, it has come a long way, thanks. Okay, some non-Pi news now. Um, so I reviewed the Mikatronics R58X in a previous video and uh, they've just said they're gonna send me an R58, which is their smaller Rockchip 3588 board. So I look forward to seeing what that's like. Uh, I'm gonna have a look at Ubuntu and Debian on that. And still on the subject of SBCs, well, kind of, this is uh, a Melee Mini PC I've been sent. It's the Quieter 3. Uh, I had the Quieter 2, which I did in an old video. 
This Quieter 3 uses a newer Celeron processor and it's really impressive, uh, but that'll be coming up very soon. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.